Did you hear the one about a giant gel plate and a tiny art journal that walked into a studio together? It sounds like the start of a joke, but today I'm going to show you how to get them to create a really fun two-page art journal entry. I'm Jackie Bernardi and welcome to my studio. This here is my giant jelly plate. It's a 16 by 20 inch Jelly Arts gel plate and I absolutely love it. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty well used. I keep the packaging for this plate because right now there's nothing large enough to keep it in that will protect it. So that even means the uh, sheet plastic that comes with it. And this gray mat that's underneath is actually a silicone mat and it's terrific for really hugging the gel plate to the workspace surface. You can see here I can it's stuck to it. So it's not going anywhere while I do the pulls of the plates. I'm going to get started by using some titanium white and some Balto blue green shade. And just a couple of drops of that. With this application, all I really want to do is get a couple of colors so there's some variation, a little bit of texture. I'm not overly worried about the lines that the Brer is creating for this particular piece because this is just going into my crazy ideas journal is what I call it. And it's where I don't know what I'm going to do or plan on. Uh-oh, got some hair in there. Gross. Uh, anyway, um, it's just where I put fun things. So I'm just rolling this out. I'm going to grab a piece of newsprint. Actually, I'm going to grab two pieces of newsprint, but I'm going to put one on one side of this gel plate. That's how big this plate is. You can put two pieces of newsprint on it to get two poles. And just going to rub it on. I'm not going to keep these pieces of paper on the plate for very long. Uh, I don't really care about picking up all of the paint. Um, I think it probably will pick up most of it, but it's not necessary. Oh, that's nice. It's like a buttery texture with that um, that blue-green and the white. It, I think it blended out beautifully. And you can see underneath there is a hard line uh, left over. And that line was created because there were two piece of, pieces of paper overlapping. Um, I'm going to need to get rid of that at some point. I don't think I'm going to want the hard edge in there. Okay, just throwing down some Payne's gray and also some Van Dyke brown. At this point, I really don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, I'm just grabbing whatever's handy and uh, we'll see where it goes. This is, if you know me at all, you know that this is a lot of my work methodology. I don't like to be too planny planny when I'm creating. Uh, this here is a six inch rubber speedball brayer, and I love this for this gel plate. Um, it's a massive gel plate and the six inch brayer allows me to move quickly over the surface of it, which is really important um, when working with such a big plate because even the fluid acrylics can have a tendency to dry out quickly. Now, both this Van Dyke Brown and the Payne's Gray are incredibly transparent layers. So you can see it beating up, which I think is going to add a really beautiful texture. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here. Um, seems a little weird to go with, you know, the blue of the Payne's Gray and a really, really brown, Van Dyke brown, odd color combination to go over the existing color uh, that we rolled out just a moment ago. But we'll see. 
<laughs> okay, I, I just mouthed there. I totally love this. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is really fun. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed that this would have come up with that Van Dyke brown and Payne's gray mixture, but wow. Hmm, what to do next? You know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this plate a little bit. Um, whatever I'm doing next, I do not want the that hard line there. So I'm just going to use some Murphy's Oil soap and water and a shop rag and just blend that out. I don't care about the plate being squeaky clean. I just didn't want to have a hard straight line. One of the awesome things about using a giant gel plate is you don't have to use the entire plate when you are pulling pulls. And that makes for some really interesting pulls. Here I'm just using more of that Van Dyke Brown and the Payne's Gray, and I'm really just going to roll out the center column of this gel plate because what I'm going to do next is do a pull, but I'm going to do the pull on only one of the newsprint sheets that uh, have the uh, colors that we just did. And so I got this idea that I thought would be interesting, and I'm just taking the paint shaper here and kind of creating an organic-ish shape out of it onto the gel plate. So what the shaper is doing is actually removing, in a really organic way, removing some of the paint that's there. So what will happen is when we put the sheet over this paint, the color that's already on the sheets that we pulled earlier will still come through and we'll get this really Hopefully we'll get this really beautiful texture and pattern that would have been almost impossible to paint in a traditional way. I'm not really worried about the edges of the paint. I think that the paper is going to cover all of that anyway. And again, I'm not keeping the paper on for very long. I'm really just getting it to grab onto the wet paint and pulling it off. Yep, this makes me really happy. Oh, I think that's so cool. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little so you can see some of the detail in here. Hmm. Paint's a little wet, so there's quite a bit of shine from the light, but I think you get the idea. I think you also get the idea that I'm pretty happy about that. So this is just a, a few minutes later. Uh, both pieces are very dry right now. Uh, and this is gorgeous. I just love the texture in this. Uh, and this one here, the pattern I think is great. It makes me think of sea life, like sea urchin or jellyfish. So I'm going to have to try to do something with that in my adorable tiny journal. This is my tiny journal. It's just shy of five inches square. Uh, I'll link to it in the description below. I love this journal. It's 80 pages. Uh, the pages are heavy enough weight where you can do a lot to it. And it's my crazy journal. Like I, I just create odd things in here and just get it out of my system. I have all different types of art journals, but this one is the one that I call my crazy journal. So all I'm doing here is measuring out some of this uh, patterned paper that we created. And I'm thinking about covering both pages with it. This here is some Yes Paste with, that I'm applying with a paint shaper just to move it quickly. Although it's not really moving fast enough for me. So I grabbed a credit card and credit cards are great at spreading the paste super thin. You don't need much. It goes on really, really thin, which is terrific because it dries faster, but it also creates less bubbling, if any bubbling, 
in the paper that you're applying it to or applying on. So I decided not to do a double page spread with this piece of paper. I don't know why I decided that, but it is what I decided. I am in the process right this minute of creating a complete video guide on jelly plates, how to use them, how to take care of them, and to give all sorts of ideas. Go ahead and click that link. So this is a piece of scrap newsprint that I'm going to use uh, underneath the page so that the glue doesn't get onto any of the other journal pages. That's always a risk you take when working in a book in this manner. So I'm just spreading out more glue on this side. And what I've decided to do was to use some of the other piece of paper from our gel print and put that on this side as a contrast to the very dark patterned paper, but a married contrast because both are made of all the same colors, right? So there's a harmony there. Now here I'm just adding a cutting board underneath that piece. Uh, what you're seeing there actually, uh, well, I'll show that in a flip book someday, but all of that there is scrap tape from a large painting I did. And I'm just using an X-Acto knife uh, to cut the edges here. I will tell you, it is not wise to cut with an X-Acto knife and a plastic ruler but I couldn't find my metal ruler while I was filming this. And uh, so I don't recommend using the plastic ruler. However, if that's all you have, it's better than nothing. Actually, it's not better than nothing. Truthfully, I should have just used scissors to cut this, cut the edges of the paper off um, because this was a little hard going and that was because my X-Acto knife was not the sharpest. And I was also using a plastic ruler. Anyway, note to self, I could have done this differently and probably better. And now I'm going to pull out one of my favorite boxes in the studio, and this is my box of Posca pens. It's not just Posca pens. It's really any kind of acrylic ink pen. So these are paint pens. It's literally acrylic paint mostly. I mean, I can see a couple Sharpies in there right now, but acrylic paint. And what I like to do is take a scrap piece of paper and get the flow of the paint pens going, but also to see, you know, the different sizes and the different variations, what pressure will do and so on. So I do that first before going into the book, because sometimes Poscas take more than a minute to get the flow going. I'm just creating dots here. Um, I love dots, circles, so on this kind of work that I'm doing right now is really soothing for me. I'm not paying a lot of attention to what I'm doing. Uh, you can't hear it, but I do have music going on in the background and it just slows my heart rate down. It allows me to explore and not be precious about anything. And that's the great thing about having a sketchbook like this. going to outline these shapes. I, the more and more I look at them, I'm mean, feeling like this is an underwater ocean sea creature-y thing. And I think thematically that's what I'm going for here. Hmm. It's missing something though and I'm not exactly sure what. So I've decided to hand write on this page and I'm just, again, using another Posca pen. This one has a very fine tip. And what I'm doing is I'm writing about how I'm feeling about these ocean creatures. And I'm just writing a little story about them. It's another way to express your creativity. And so I'm kind of telling a story, although the way I'm writing it, the writing is very close together and overlaps a lot. So 
it would be likely if you focused on it, you couldn't read it, but I know it was there, and I know what I was feeling when I wrote it. And although this may look very busy right now, I think the handwriting element ended up being pretty important to the final journal entry. I'm taking a break from that page for a moment because quite honestly, there's not really space to do anything else with it. And I'm taking one of the organic shapes that I created with the paint shaper and I am cutting it out and thinking about putting it on the opposite page here to create some continuity be between the two pages, not just color continuity, but shape continuity. And the problem was at first, it just disappeared onto this page. So I went in and I did some handwriting. It's not really handwriting, it's just loops. I just made loops all over it and some dots. And that pulled over a similarity and a continuity from the other page. And I'm going to glue it on here. Here's the thing, if I had to do this one over again, I would have either done, no, I definitely would have done a much smaller cutout of the patterned paper. And just the reason being is all the shapes that we're seeing are exactly the same size. And I just think it would have been more visually interesting perhaps if I made it a little bit smaller but I didn't, and there we go. Just adding some yes paste to the back of this. I'm gonna glue it right on to the facing page and see how I like it. Well, I like it, but again, there's not enough contrast between the blue-green background and this sea creature that I brought over. So I am using an art graph water soluble graphite block and in white and I'm just outlining the entire sea creature uh, because I want to create some contrast between the element and the background and as I'm doing this I'm really disliking the hard edge I don't like the hard edge and when I think about sea creatures and particularly jellyfish when you see pictures of them in the ocean, frequently you see kind of a glow, an internal glow. So I was trying to go for that by using a little damp rag and kind of moving around that white graphite a little bit, not a lot, uh, and just soften the edges. And I've got to tell you, I really like how this came out. I, I like that there's a little bit of a glow. Oh, need a little more glue there. Okay. I like that there's a glow. I mean, I think it helps it stand out a bit and when it dries, I like it even better. Yep, it's a fun little project to go from a giant jelly plate into this little itty bitty teeny tiny journal and having a lot of fun with it and really thinking through my process as I went. This was absolutely a very happy day in the studio.